Hi, Caroline Ryder, and welcome to the chapter on love and leadership and the balance of love and leadership. Meaning, when I'm working with um, horses all the time, you know, I, I'm very mindful, cognizant of that heartfelt space within me. How does that resonate energetically? Because I want the horse to feel that. And, and what is it? It's compassion. It's feeling of and, and for my horse. Meaning I don't, I try not to take anything personal. I don't have expectations. I don't have expectations. I do expect, but I don't have expectations. Being in a space where we are present enough to understand in that moment of time where that horse is, where you are, where you need to be, what's needed. This work isn't just I love my horse. How does that show up? And for me in this work, especially following the Tao or Taoism, um, Tao of horsemanship, is the law of, of Wu Wei. They have everything to do with where I need to be in that moment. And that's the most important thing to the journey and the process. It's, it is everything to the journey. That is the journey, the spiritual journey. Do I have a plan of action? Yes. And I love my journey. I love that every day I come into the work. I can't say that I don't know what's going to happen because we have enough education and enough foundation and enough consistency. Um, but I'm not clouded by the fact that when we get in here to this dressage arena, um, I've kind of outlined in my mind X, Y, and Z that I'd like to work on and dang it, that has to happen. And even though I might mindfully be thinking about being in the moment and where my horse is, I always, when my horses show up with resistance or some level of um, resistance in their body. So it's just really tuning in and becoming aware, even, you know, where I am in my work, when I have to check myself, you know, here I think, oh my gosh, I practice this all the time. I get to do this for a living. You know, it's, it's easier for me because I do this all the time, but I have to check myself too. It's a little bit more... Um, I think harder for me right now because like I said you know I'm so mindful about it but the body doesn't lie the body will not lie it is being compassionate it is understanding the nature to the best of your ability of your horse and yourself working with where you are what you can offer staying in the moment working with your horse becoming more flexible becoming more adaptable I'll show that in this in the work with Sundance because she's going to show up however she shows up and it's not always easy. Leadership. Leadership has nothing to do in this work with making my horse do anything. I believe in leadership and exemplary leadership. How I show up. How lovingly, consistently loving I am yet absolutely appropriate in my firmness, my boundaries as far as what's appropriate behavior and what isn't and my follow-through my fair follow-through in the beginning when i work with horses and develop them i look at it as if you know again they're in school with me they are my pupils i am their mentor i have a lot of responsibility to make sure that i provide emotionally and physically the right environments so that we can maintain an open learning frame of mind at all times. So I definitely have an idea of what I want to do and I have purpose in my work. And the purpose takes skill sets, it takes experience to know what you're looking for, how it needs to show up within you and your horse. It's not just the purpose isn't just some technique. This horse has to go, oh, five times to the left and five times to the right and do three inside turns. It's how she shows up in this work that's so important to me. And sometimes I can get on her case and wake her up, put a little pressure on her and bring her in and say, ah, uh -uh. and that's all we need. And sometimes it's just not going to work. So I don't kill it. I don't drill it. I'm like, okay, that's our off day. She's going through the motions. She really doesn't want to do this. Let's move on to something else. So let's begin showing 
how she's going to show up and how I show up with the love now that I've talked about the characteristics and how uh, I perceive it, how I embody it, how I feel about love, how I feel about leadership. And I'll talk throughout the work. A lot of times your horses, you'll take the halter off, you'll bring them in here and they're, they'll start walking around eating grass or just being nosy. And that's unacceptable but it's gonna happen. Just know that that's not what I want you to achieve ultimately. I want you to be able to come in here and have this horse participating and connected. If she's not here 110%, then I'm gonna to have to go after her and make it happen. And I don't wanna to have to make it happen. I want to cultivate this. I wanna develop this way of being so that this is not an issue. So we're in here. I wanna see how well how responsive she is, how relaxed she is, how soft she is, how much she's enjoying this work. But this is how she responds to the work. And she's very, very unique in that way. And that's what makes it complex. She's doing a lot of blinking, but her ears keep pinning. Her head should be lower and softer. So let's push her out. Good girl. Let's let her stretch. I'm going to push her out because sometimes Sundance really needs to put that nose to the ground and stretch. Lower lip has relaxed. I don't know if you can, if you can uh, get that on camera. Good after that lick and chew. Good girl. Good girl, babe. Lots of positive. Hi, honey. Yeah. There you go. But I can see where it's squished. Her lip was squished right in here. It might not have been shriveled up. It was still hanging low. Good girl. Let's see if she can get that nose to the ground. Good girl. So when I see her like this, we have to do this. And we'll do this when I'm riding too. We'll do a lot of stretching. So let's play with this a little bit more. There's the love. There's no leadership as far as me having to set boundaries. I'm just going to send her out. Good. Nice trot. Pull her in. I'd like a trot. You see the ears pinning. I'd like it if she didn't move that far away from me. Now, I said earlier, how do I know that that intense look is, how do I know if it's irritation or defense? I know by the way she comes into me. I know this because she's taught me this. Now, if, you, if you've if you worked with cattle and a high play drive in a horse, uh, she does not have a high play drive. But a horse that has a lot of cow sense, a lot of play drive, when they work cattle, they are intense and the ears are back. Just go and look at any YouTube video if you're not familiar with this and look for um, team penning. There's such a balance. If you, if you, constantly allow this horse and uh, to come into your space without any level of responsibility as far as how she comes into your space because you're just so happy she's coming into your space if you're not clear there's a lot of horses out there that have these behaviors and how do you work with that and there's this love and leadership and this balance and this way of this ebb and flow and you you've got to at any moment know where you need to be developing respect is about boundaries emotional boundaries, physical boundaries, letting her know that's not acceptable. You can't come into my space. So with that attitude, so let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice and soft. So let's say as soon as she turned into me, she kept trotting with ears pinned and never slowed down. No, that's not acceptable. She slowed down and respected my space. And when she slowed down and thought about me and respected me enough to slow down and be mindful, what happened? The ears came forward. Pick your battles. To me, I want her, I know that if she stays hooked on to me, it's fabulous. I mean, she's going to show this all the time. And when she's hooked on and we can play, she is the most beautiful horse at Liberty. I do expect yet I don't have expectations. So I want to make clear what I mean by when I expect my horse to act a certain way. I only expect horses to act a certain way when they have a solid level of education, foundation. 
it's not fair so that to just expect a horse to know without consistent training and work and way of being so if a horse comes to me for the first time within the Within the first couple of weeks, within the first 30 days, we have definitely established enough consistency and handling and being together that I can expect them to show up. Thank you. That concludes this chapter of love and leadership and knowing where you need to be, learning where you need to be. Where do I need to be for this mare at that moment? Where do I need to be for us? when I'm needed, the feel and timing. And again, the why is developed through practice. And the why is not a question, it's an understanding of, yes, I knew exactly why I needed to be there. Yes, that feels great, I got it. It's a level of confidence that comes. And they need you to have that level of confidence, not questioning all the time. Again, that's leadership. Thank you and enjoy.